Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, today, I'm actually pretty anxious because that's the first time I did not learn my script. So we're just <laughs> going to go with the flow. Uh, on today's episode, we have the honor to be with someone who on paper literally looks Perfect. Next we star, model, and cook. This Frenchman has everything, and he's here to talk about his role on Selling Sunset, as well as discussing the cultural differences between his home country, France, and his new life here in LA. So please, everyone, welcome Romain Bonnet. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. How was that intro? Was that good? That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. That I was great. I try my best. Yeah. You, know the, you know the struggle of speaking English when you're French. Uh. <laughs> uh, so Romain, to give a little background about yourself, uh, so you're 28 years old. That's correct. Uh, you are Gemini, so I would say that you're born around June 10? June 18, exactly. June 18, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, from France, Paris. Yeah, from France, yeah. I'm born and raised in Paris. Okay, so do I, so you see. <laughs> um, and then you are obviously known for uh, being on the uh, Netflix show called Sailing Sunset. That's correct. Uh, is there anything I'm missing about your background that I need to mention? We'll talk about more. That's it. After I started traveling since I was 18, all around the world, uh, you know, I went to a few different countries and then till what, I end up here. <laughs> what countries did you go to? Where so did you visit? I used to, well, I've, I used to live in like probably like five or six countries, but I visit probably like 20, 25 of them. So um, I used to live in Norway, in Oslo spe um, um, specifically. Uh, after I moved to New Caledonia, I came back to France, came to the US, I moved to Italy. Came back, moved to Australia for to Sydney for two years, and then um, I completely fell in love with Sydney. Um, that was really the city. I, I didn't know anything about Sydney actually when <laughs> I went there, but I just literally fell in love with Sydney. And I feel like it's almost like a, a little LA. Okay. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Did you surf in uh, Sydney? No. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, I ne I've never been like a, a surfer, but I love like all the all the sports with like you know yeah. uh, in the water and stuff like that. But no, I didn't get to actually uh, surf. But it's uh, okay. I'll teach you how to surf. I'm uh, not too bad at surfing. I there mean, you I, go. I, li I live in LA now, so I literally had to learn how to surf. Uh, so Romain, before you did all those travels and living in the United States, uh -huh. you obviously grew up in France. Um, what was it like growing up in France? Uh, what do you remember from your childhood there? It's so funny how people, well, before they go to Paris, they think like Paris is only the Eiffel Tower, the oh Champs my God, yeah. that it's only like, you know, like beautiful city, that there's nothing wrong or no Don't homeland. give me wrong. It is an amazing city. Like we see the Eiffel Tower and it's like yeah. whatever for us. But since the last two years, actually, I start to see it as a, as a tourist. Okay. And I'm like, oh, wow. It's like <laughs> it's, man, it's crazy how like when you go back, you know, for yeah. vacation, you go there and you feel like you're revisiting the city because exactly. you're, you're not getting used to like going to fancy restaurant, eating good food no, and like no, no. seeing all these monuments and museum. The first time I went to the Louvre was mm -hmm. actually after, you know, I went back from the United States. In 18 years, I've never been to the Louvre no. unless I went to the US, came back and was like, oh, I probably want to visit yeah, this yeah, museum. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting to see like you grew up in a place yeah, where yeah, so. it's not all fancy. No, uh, no, no. It wasn't like, you know, I can complain. My parents, you know, uh, raised me and gave me like a good life, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously there was like some up and then, you know, when I grew up, but uh, uh, I can't complain, but I wasn't like, you know, the fairy tale that everyone thinks that Paris is. So, yeah. you know, and it's funny, sometimes when I go with my with my wife and I tell her, I'm like, you guys see Paris, like, oh, that's great and everything. I'm like, go 30 minutes away from Paris, take the, take the area, I'm like, you know, and go see. Take the I'm like, go yeah. to the Grand Bord and see how fancy yeah. the, the architecture you don't, is. You don't, you, the, the police don't even go there, but, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some area here in the US that... You know, it's probably the same. I just grew up, so I knew what's going on. You know, yeah, uh, it's a different, uh, it's a different life. But you know, I guess, like I said, it probably made the person who I am today. So, how would you describe the French people and especially like the Parisian? What is your picture of them? They could, they can be assholes. Okay, I don't wanna give like a bad image of like French people because there's some people they are amazing. They're gonna they're going to step out of the way and then just try to help you if they see you in trouble or whatever it is. You know, if you're looking for something or you lost or anything like that, they're going to, you know, actually take the time to help you. But it's true that um, uh, they can they can be pretty, you know... Pretty like, direct, pretty yeah, direct or pretty and, mean sometimes. And cold, you and know. And cold, very cold. You know what I mean? France, uh, Spain, and I think even Italy, for a long time, like, uh, those three countries didn't, like, learn English or anything like that. Every time we were going... The, to any of these countries, they were just talking their language. They didn't care. And yeah. 
I was the first before I started traveling. I was like at the school, my teacher was like, Why well, don't you want to learn? I'm like, I'm French. I, I live in French. Yeah. I don't need it. You don't, you don't need that's And exactly. it was so dumb because later on I had to pay for to go to school. Yeah. To learn English, you know what I mean? I, but so that I think that was such a big thing also in France that um, that um, that was the problem, I guess, with the tourists and everything for such a long time. Like, you know, all the tourists that was going to Paris and were asking questions, they couldn't even answer because they didn't even know what they were talking about. So that is funny because then what you're saying, if I summarize it, that French people sometimes are not mean. They probably want to help you, but they just don't speak English. Or yeah. They don't know what to say. They should probably just pass you. Exactly. But then, then they could say like, sorry, or they could try to make you understand they don't understand or they don't talk your language. Or they get shy of speaking yeah. English. What about the mentality now uh, that we've talked about French people? What is the mentality there? If only all those people could realize so much they actually have for free, it would bring so many people back to uh, you know back down to earth and like like say like oh damn we are lucky i know i agree with you and that actually helped me coming here to realize that uh what is one thing you miss the most about paris one thing that you miss the most the easy things would be family and friends i guess and okay. then maybe the food i i was anticipating yeah. your answer so the food you're missing the french food i mean kind of everybody does your chef so yeah, I'm sure yes that... and no, because uh, so I'm half Italian, and for me, oh my god, yeah, for, I... for me, the best food ever it's the Italian food. Oh man, you know how big is the competition between Italian and French people yeah, because of football, especially. <laughs> so, I well, I'm like fully French, uh, I've been only to Italy to go skiing, and I love Italian food. Obviously, oh my like... god, for me, it's the best. Hey, personally, <coughs> that's my favorite food. I love tiramisu, so. but I still think that the French food then are viennoiserie or pâtisserie. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, that's not like the, for the breakfast, like the all the bakery and everything. That's French by far, even like the simple like chocolate croissant and croissant and just the baguette. Like I, I can tell, I can tell you're very Americanized because you say chocolate croissant and you didn't say pain au chocolat. Yeah. <laughs> what What was the hardest thing when you learned English? Like like stuff that you still like struggling with. For such a long time, my wife gave me a hard time with it. Yeah. It was like the um, to say a toothpaste and then a toothbrush. Toothbrush and toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, I was like uh, the the the. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's yeah. the the tooth. Just the fact that the sound th make like th. Yeah. Make no sound. No. Like no. No makes no sense to me. Yeah. No. Because no. like in French, t is t and h is you know h. silent. <laughs> yeah. So like just th th. It's like a s. So uh, you mentioned your wife, you know, and the struggle of speaking English. Uh, I'm sure she helped you a lot. And your relationship with uh, your wife, her name is Marie. Yeah. Mary. Mary. Uh, we're going to say yeah. with, the, with the English-American accent. Uh, how did this, rela this relationship like change your life? All my friends and close friends and everyone, they know. And everyone can tell you, actually, that's close for me. Uh, I don't think there's anyone, even like the two twins from the show, yeah. that's worth like they, they're, they're loaded. Right? Yeah. They were gonna tell you they never met anyone that worked harder than me. So okay. I don't yes, my wife opened a ton of door for me, right? Um all my my friends and group of friends that I'm in right now opens a lot of doors for me. Yeah, that's for sure. Now anything that I have right now this day, till this day, uh I think I'll uh I owned it. Okay. I, know. I, I agree with you. Well, we opened door doors for you, but uh -huh. you take on the opportunity and made the best out exactly. of it. Exactly. Anyone in the group like can tell you like they never met anyone that worked more than me. Like yeah. I work like I don't know, 70, 80 hours a week sometimes. Like they're like, I don't know. Like they tell my wife because I so we talk about it because we never <laughs> we like people ask us like how do you make your marriage like uh, you know work? And I was like, Well, it's simple, we don't see each other. And it's actually true because she works a lot and I work a lot. And so we never get to see each other, but it's like, yeah, everyone was like, I don't even know how you still standing. Like, do I you, never, like, stop. Do you miss her sometime? Yeah, obviously. Uh, so we try to do find a way to uh, to do some little getaway or staycation, you know, here and there yeah. as soon as we can uh, to reconnect, which so far has been working amazing. But during the week, it's true. Like, I wake up but before she wakes up. I go to bed, she's still awake usually because she deals with like clients that's overseas in, uh, you know, in Europe and everything. So she has to stay up. And so literally, like I come, I leave to work, it's like, I don't know, like 6.30, something. I come home, it's like 7, 8 p.m. I just take a shower, eat, 
give her a kiss and then I'm out to bed. That's, that's crazy that you're doing all of this at only 28 years old. Yeah. So you're only 28 years old and you're literally having the entrepreneur mindset and you're literally a husband. You know, you're doing like all these things, you're modeling, you know, you're literally like you're really grinding it at such a young age. And do, do you have this feeling that you're missing out on like your early age so like you're 23 24 no. 25 years old of like everybody think like you go out you experience life you no, you know i think um I, i've done my share of like going out and then everyone is joking because i was like why so when we start when i start talking about like everything i've done and whatever yeah. so they said oh shit, you did done a lot and so i've done my share but like um I always since i was young i always wanted to focus on my, you know, my future and everything. And then I know what I want. And then, uh, you know, uh, I don't miss out on anything, you know, party, I've done it. I've You've done, done it. it, I've done it and done it and done it a You lot. can still party with your wife, it's not even Exactly, the, yeah. but me, I see now what makes me the most happy and enjoy more and everything. That's her. It's to, it's her and to travel and discover like, you know, travel all around the world and be with her and share a moment. Yeah. That's, that's more that, you know, going in like club, get fucked up and then spend like a thousand dollars in a bowl and then you're like, oh my I, God, I, my headache and everything. That reminds me of one of the first episodes in season five when you guys are having a little argument when you wanted to go out yeah. and she wanted to stay in. <laughs> And that reminds me it, of that. It wasn't like even going out. It just we had like plans. American, I like this. It's like, they're going to tell you, okay, in two weeks, uh, do you want to go there? Yeah. They say yes. But if you don't shake up with them every two days, like it's out of their head. So me, two weeks after last time that, that happened, two weeks after, I'm like, uh, my wife was, say, she saw me getting ready. She saw you I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to do this and this and this. Uh, with, so she uh, forgot about it. Them. And she said, wait, did you check with everyone? I'm like... No, they say yes. I'm like, I know they say yes, but it was two weeks ago. Did you check? I'm like, no. And so I got so pissed off at everyone. I'm like, when someone plans something, I'm like, I'm doing it. Yeah. You know? I don't need to. So it was just a misunderstanding. Yeah. More than more, anything. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you know, like your um, your wife and you are like a huge part of your life. But I'm sure that Mary, her son, is also, you know, a big part of, you know, her <laughs> every day. Well, how's your relationship with, if I'm not wrong, his name is Austin? Yeah. You know, what's your relationship with him and how does he see you? Well, Austin and we are a clo close relationship. I don't think, he, and I, I don't ever want him to see me as his, like his stepfather or whatever. Yeah. It is. But we have a close relationship, actually. That seems like a, not like a bro, but like almost, you know, that's why it's my boy. Like a little bro. The, yeah, I like him. And then we hang out and everything. And we're actually so proud. And he just entered the Air Force. Congrats to him, <laughs> Austin. Good job. <laughs> He's actually graduating. And then we're going next week to see uh, uh, for his graduation in Austin. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. so That's no, uh, in, uh, but he never lived with us. He always had his own place and everything. So, but uh, yeah, he just started to uh, to go to the air force and everything. And uh, yeah, we're really proud of him. Well, and I'm glad everything is going well for him. So, uh, <laughs> seeing Aussie, does that make you want to have you know a kid? daughter or son well we always that that's the things you know you see my mindset how it is and yes if you ask me yes i want kids do i want it now absolutely not i want to focus i want to build my empire i want to take every single advantage of like all the opportunity that comes to me right now and which is like a lot right now so it's like if i don't do it right now tomorrow everything can stop and mm -hmm. I can have the time for the kids right and i'm like but i don't know how long this opportunity is going to be there for me so I want to try to take advantage of all the opportunity as much as I can before uh, and build more like, you know, uh, like uh, uh, more wealth and then have like a house and be ready for a kid. Now, the problem it is, is that I know that between me and Mary with the age difference and everything, then we're going to get to a point that we're going to have to make a decision. I know. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? That you... me in my head, if you ask me, I will never even think about having kids before. Like, I don't know, like. 35 yeah it, it's it's important to be like final financially uh, financially sorry financially stable uh but then at the end of the day like years matter you can't exactly have it too late um and that's probably a question that comes back to like probably every time you guys are talking like how old am i gonna be how old you're gonna be uh are you, what, but are you ready like are you ready as a person tomorrow to be a father if i had to yes i yes. would be too do i want to right now i don't know I, I think there's, uh, uh, right now, our life, we barely see each other with my wife. I'm like putting a kid, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't want to put a kid to have someone raise it, my kid for me, 
right? So I don't want to have a nanny that I pay that no, every day. Is a, you terrible. know what I mean? So yeah, I don't no. want that. And I'm like, if I barely see my wife, uh, how are you going to see your how kid? How am I going to see my kid, right? Yeah. And I don't want to see a kid just to have a kid to say, oh, I have a kid. I have a kid, yeah. Someone raising it for you and then not seeing it. And then after it's probably going to create like a, you know, big like uh, uh, argument, my wife and everything. We, uh, we don't want to miss on this mm -hmm. so we're actually starting the process to uh to go to the to the clinic fertility clinic and okay. then so we're gonna um we are freezing, uh, freezing her eggs. embryos and everything and then just put it all together so that way when we want to do it'll, it it'll happen then we know we have at least the eggs that's you know frozen and ready to go okay now when we don't know yet and obviously we know that we can be in like too too long but right now we uh we're just trying to see. As long as you guys are on the same page, you know, that's, yeah. that, that's what matter. That's mm -hmm. what matter. That's what matter. Uh, one of my last question is uh, to like year gap. Like, how do you do? Because you guys are not sure. 12, 13, it's in between. I think something like that. You yeah, got to know her. 13, 13, 13, 13. So yeah, 12, 13 years gap. How is that? How is this different? Uh, do you feel the difference by, you know, dating someone? No. Who's thir really? No, Come she's, on. Uh, she's like, uh, sometimes sometime we even love, I'm like, I don't need a kid, I have my, I have my kid. <laughs> she's like, she's just so young, you know. Everyone say I've always been like an old soul, mm -hmm. and she's a young one. I admire uh, that from her, like um, how hardworking she can be, how much, like, how like, yeah, professional, and like she can focus and, and do so much. So I admire that from her, like, so much. And I think we both admire and uh, and my this for me chooser um but uh, but she's still like she, she can be like so young and everything and since the day one obviously when we uh, when we start the first time I asked her out obviously I knew there was a uh, uh, age gap right but I didn't know what I didn't want to ask cuz I didn't want to be awkward but I knew that that question will happen right yeah. and until this happened and then she was like and at first she didn't tell me, so she asked my age first, and she was like, "Oh my God!" Because she thought about her son and everything. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, "What? Well, how old are you?" And then after she told me, I, th I think at that point she was like 38 or something like 37. I can't but remember. But she heard the French accent and she was all in. She no, but like <laughs> at, fr at first she was like, "Oh my God, I can do this and I can do that." And then, but you know, when you have that connection and you yeah. have like. I personally think that age is just a number. I personally think that yeah. if you connect with some, like, with a person on like you know deeper level, mm -hmm. and that you love that person, I, I, it doesn't matter how old. Exactly. This person is. I just uh, you know I, I love her. I think she's like the most beautiful, and then she loves me. And My girlfriend's older than me. Mm -hmm. You know, two years older than me, so not thirteen, but two. Yeah. And she's always making joke about oh, like your baby, you know. And I was like ah, you yeah. know. But she's always joking, always joking about this. Uh, no, but thanks, uh, thanks for sharing about your relationship with Mary. And uh, now let's talk more about you know, like the show like mm -hmm. sunset itself uh, how long did it take for uh, the show to be filmed by netflix one season it's about like three to four months wow and every day they're following you guys my wife film like four to five times a week and then like long hour like sometimes it can be like over eight hours per day and it's not bothering you that having cameras around you like just for privacy the first season you discover so you go with it and yeah it may be awkward a little bit it's kind of exciting the first yeah. season yeah but then after you see the result, you see what you get from it, you see the good side of it, you see the bad side of it. It is not only good, you know what I mean? And then uh, and then after it's like, if you decide to keep going, then it's only getting better or worse, yeah. like whatever you call that. Because obviously the fame gets bigger, the people are kind of used, your privacy gets smaller, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know what what's gonna happen the more you're gonna go forward you know yeah. further and the the, the more hardest he gets you there's, know there's I mean? up and downs everybody exactly thinks like so you know what it is so yeah it's like yes there's some there's some amazing part of it there's some side a little bit less yeah. like the privacy and everything it's like you have to be careful anywhere when in public you have to be careful of what you say what you do yeah like you know yeah you can get it's, fucked up you can you have to be well careful. you can if there's no cameras around <laughs> no, because these people are everywhere. Last time we were at dinner and then like people pop the camera and everything. Stop it. Everywhere we go. Yeah. How would you react to this if someone like do this? Would you get mad or would oh, you? But it happens all the time. 
So you're not doing anything? No, because but that's what we 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 learn to behave, and then you can you have to be super careful on everything. Us when we are between cast member, like one time I remember my my wife went with uh, another one of the other girl. They went to eat something. Which one? A crucial. Crucial. So how, yeah, crucial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so they that went. That is uh, Jason's ex now. X spilling some tea now. No, it's at the end of season five. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I you know I've only watched until episode ten, so I didn't. Well, what happened? Because I didn't even watch the last episode. It's just because um, they love each other so much, but they look uh, perfect together. Like exactly, he, she met it his just, mom. He, and yeah, he's just now ready to have a kid, and that's something. She's uh, she's forty. She told him. She yeah. told. She put an ultimatum. Exactly, and so he's he told her he's been honest with her, and he said he's not as much as he loves her. He can he, he doesn't want to stop her from you know not having her her goal like yeah. fulfilled basically. And he said, I'm not ready to have a kid right now, so I don't think you know I don't want it. Is at it, the moment so is it not weird in the office when she walks in and then he's here for a while they weren't like uh, going in the office because as obviously. an agent you can work from home so obviously it's just starting to be better obviously yeah. oh Everything. yeah 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 so basically so mary and christian one day so to tell you like how crazy it can be they went to a, a dinner at tess on sunset right mm -hmm. I know. they came out they were just walking in the street someone with a pizza mm -hmm. well the box dropped TMZ. Poop. Stop it. Oh, everywhere. Shut everywhere. up. So yeah. someone act like they had a pizza? Yes. And they dropped the camera? Yeah, what, they dropped the pizza and they, oh, it's TMZ, Mary Fitzgerald, uh, Christian Stoss, like, what do you have to say? Every, everywhere. You have no idea. And w like, here, like, has a, like, a husband, like, when you see your wife, you know, like, not having privacy and, you know, kind of getting, like, not attacked, but kind of by... Journalists, paparazzi, fans. Yeah, but this we know. You, I mean, it's hard for you. <laughs> when we buy ourselves, it's like kind of okay. Yeah. As soon as me and my wife are together, the twins are together, or it's all over. Of, it's over. Well, or when we are like the four of us together. Are you ever getting into like any like fights or argument with someone who no, went too disrespectful? No, 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 no. no we are all the fans have been like amazing and we're like thankful for everything. Well, you've been mentioning so many people between uh, Jason, and Chrishell, um and obviously your wife. But who are your favorite people on the show? Who are your best friend that you like hanging out all the time? Well, the closest, closest, closest is Sergeant and Brett. Obviously, it's my boys. Okay, that's your boys? Yeah, we're at the gym, we go party, we do do. But we man, it's, it's so funny, and I, I'm sure like people are always asking you that question. Jason dated Mary in the past. Is that weird to you? Or are you no, like, that's the past, doesn't no, matter? No, that's the past, and plus I know he's scared of me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You, guys, you guys look awesome. Are you guys sometimes making joke about it? Are you yeah, guys talking? but then every time that he, he starts saying something, I'm like, yeah, but that's why she, she kicked you out. And she and that's got why the, she's with me, she, huh? she got a better version, bigger version. And it too. But it's just like, just funny. And Jason actually is the person that I got the closest, the fastest. Okay, interesting. Not, right now, I don't know if he's the closest. I'm super close with so many. But at first, it was like, like the one that got the closest and the fastest. And I think that's why he helped so much. It's like right away, I saw him as a brother mm -hmm. and never as a like, oh, someone that no. I have to worry or anything like that. You that's know good. I mean? I, I, like that's a great yeah. way. Just and so, yeah, that's the past. I'm friend, one of my best friends in France and Mary met her was like a girl that I used to date a long time ago. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like. You guys are open-minded. You guys are not the type of people being like, oh, they used to date my partner. So like, I'm going to be mean. Yeah, like, no. they both like super respectful. Yeah, and you then, never then, had then, any doubts. No, never, never. Not even closing my mind. Okay. Like, you know. Good. Well, good for you guys. I'm so, happy that you can have an healthy relationship and just <laughs> work. Yeah, yeah. With them with no problem. Uh, one character that in season five, you know, it's, it's almost all about her because she's in the middle of every drama. Kristen. Yeah. Thoughts on Kristen? Well, uh, Kristen is Kristen. She's like. What do you think? She just likes to make drama all the time. So, all like, the that's time, a lot. That's what, that's what a lot of people do. They make drama on TV to get, like, more yeah, famous. Yeah, but, like, but, uh, but see, after she doesn't want to confront, um, to have the confrontation with anyone because every time when they confront her, like this, oh, you guys are monster. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no, but you give shit to everyone. You talk shit because there's a lot of things that you guys don't see. That's what I'm saying. That's all the stuff that the show, right? That's she done an interview. That's done by Jamesy. That's done like, but everything we see that because our name pops up. So we receive notification by our publicist, by our, like PR person and everything, you know? So we get to see all this. So 
we know what's going on. So sometimes when it blew up, she act like, oh, but I don't know. No, no you know what she did. So she's acting like nothing happened, yes. but we all know that it did. Yes. And but but some people from uh, some viewer don't know all those little things. So it man seems like, oh, we've been rough on her. No, 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 no. There's a reason so you, why. It's even worse than what oh people think. Oh, my God. Do you have anything that happened off camera that like she did and that like you know like kind of like destroyed her relationship with everybody? Because obviously there is this There's thing. So many, I don't know. Like uh, one thing that you think she, for example, to you, what did she do to you? Because on the show, I've watched it, and she does things to the girls, but you personally. Yeah, but me, if she attacks my wife, it's the same. Okay, so what happened? Like Mary and her used to be best friend. They used to be close, uh, close friends. They live together. My, my wife. Her and forever and ever and ever is been best friend with Amenza. That's her best friend forever. Okay. She, so that that was her real best friend. She they were close friend with Christine. They used to live together. And then uh, I just think that Christine, uh, yeah, I don't know. She 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 just changed and and I don't know if the TV got you know got her in her got in her head. Uh, yeah, or something That's... like that. And she just started making drama and say something and then. 10 minutes after she has an interview and you're gonna say the opposite and yeah. then start talking shit with Heather and Tarek and everything. So I know she created like so many like- uh, She created dramas to bring attention to herself. Exactly. Like saying with like uh, Hema, one of the girls of the show, saying that she she was engaged to her. So her, their ex is one yeah. of my friends okay. actually that I know. And then she said to him, she said, oh, but I was engaged with her. And like every single person on the show knows it's not true. I'm like, why do you need to try to make up this two thing you were engaged? Then what do you, we all know you weren't. Yeah. He never proposed to you. So what she's, would you? She's, she's, she's and lying. Then, and then at that point when she does that, she's married, she has a kid. And I'm like, both of you girls are not even with the guy anymore. You are married to someone else, but you still find a way to go and lie on camera in front of the whole world saying you went. What exactly does it change to you? Well, we know for sure that she's not the best, you know, broker. But like, we like the thing is, she brings a lot of fans and a lot of people is watching the show because of the dramas. So like, is I'm about to start an MBA in real estate, and I'm just like, I was actually interesting first because of you know learning and kind of see how mm -hmm. it is. Uh, and I saw this girl, and I was like, wow, she's really just here to get detention, to be the center of the attention, and you know, literally. Be becoming famous after the show. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's only my, you know, point of view, but after what you just said, I feel like everybody thinks the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But it's, it is what it is. But, you know, I, but on the other side, and I don't take that away from anyone else, it's like all the other girls are fucking bursting their ass off. And, and, and obviously they need to make it look like that. Yeah. But being a real estate agent is not as easy as I know. they can see on TV. They're not closing deal every two days. Yeah. I mean, some of them, maybe Jason. <laughs> Jason might be the only one. But it's like a lot of work and stuff like that that they have to do and Perfect. research and everything. So okay. it's like... Uh, well, thanks for sharing and spilling, spilling some teas on, about like everybody. You know, it's it's good to know a lot more about uh, all the characters in Slang mm -hmm. Sunset. Uh, we're going to finish today by some French 101 and teach people how to speak some slang argot in French. So let's do some French 101 time. French 101. Uh, but uh, some slang words. How would you teach someone to talk like in argot and slang in French? So some like words or expression that you have in mind that you use back oh, home. Uh, I'll do one, you do one. Okay. All right, so the first one for me is bouffer. So bouffer is a verb in French, it's a slang verb for to eat. So if you say I eat in slang, it would be je bouffe. Yeah. What about you? Let's see if you got better. We could say like, you know, when there's something crazy, Yeah. Uh, you would say... Uh, Truc de ouf. Truc de ouf. <laughs> truc de ouf. So it's so funny because truc de ouf means like crazy thing. Yeah. Because truc is thing and then crazy is fou. Yeah. My next one is une arnaque. 
Like a catfish. Yeah, I like a catfish. I wouldn't say that. So if you swipe on like dating apps like like Tinder, Bumble, or whatever, like and it's a nine, and you end up by being a three. Yeah, that's a catfish. <laughs> that's a huge <laughs> one. If you come from a nine to a three out of ten. Oh, I've seen my friend. I never been personally on any yeah. uh, dating app ever, but I see my friend, and I always say like, oh, that's a that, that's a ripoff. Would he say no, 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 that look good? She, now, he went there. Oh, dude, gone. bro. Nowadays they have like um, you know apps that can literally make their ass bigger or make their muscle bigger you can literally find like a completely different person so that's why like yeah, there no. is a lot of arnaque scam catfish out there okay so your turn now what do you have it's a good one like to say it's mean or it can be it's really good c'est chomé c'est chomé so here it's, it's yeah. like verlon yeah so if you say it's c'est chomé it means like it's like real good It's so funny, you're right, because if we say méchant means Mais, mean. Yeah, but if you say c'est méchant, yeah. it means you mean. Exactly. But usually, I mean, yeah, because I don't know anyone in French that will say c'est chomé, meaning like, oh, it's mean. Nobody does. No. So in French, if you say in the Verlan way, so if you like switch the beginning and the end of the word together, if you say like, oh, it's mean, okay, it's chomé, that means it's good. That means you're <laughs> killing it. And it's so funny because if you put it, like, put it backwards, so like normal, yeah. méchant, yeah. then it's more like you're it's mean, mean, like c'est méchant. <laughs> so if you just switch the beginning and the end, it has a completely different meaning. Yeah. That's why people struggle learning French. It's such a hard language. Well, that's slang too. So, I mean, I guess if you can talk like, if like you, just proper French. If you know this, you know you're fluent in French. Let's do two more. One that I love is c'est lourd. C'est lourd. So, like, it means it's heavy in French, but it also means, like, it's good, you know? So, if something happened and you say, like, oh, like, this person is doing great, you were like, oh, c'est lourd. It's heavy. Ouais, du coup, le dernier, ça va être euh, un charro. Un charro. Un so, charro. Un bon charro. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it means, like, uh, the guy that just want to go and fuck girls. <laughs> exactly. Un charro is a player. It's a fuck boy. It's someone that is... Only going to try to have sex with girl and usually have a tons of dating apps that's trying to have no feelings. So if you see someone like this, just be like, tu es un charo, you are a charo. So <laughs> give it a try and tell me what you think. <laughs> All right, Roman, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank it was, you. Uh, it was a pleasure to have for you. C'était lourd. Franchement, c'était lourd de t'avoir. Any last word for today? Yeah, so... Um So basically, they are, all my social uh, uh, media are at the Romain Bonnet. Yeah. Okay, and if you want his number, sorry, we're not going to give today. Sorry, uh, not yet. Yeah, not yet. He said all. Don't try. Thank <laughs> you. Au revoir. Bonne journée. Thank Bonne soirée. Thank you, guys. And, uh, à bientôt. Ciao, ciao. À bientôt.